welcome back. <laughs> we met last seven days ago, and we are opportuned because of God's favor, God's grace, God's blessings for us to meet again seven days after. I hope what you learned last week, you've gone to study more and, you know, read your Bibles and see and learn those things for yourself so we can all be prepared for what? The rapture. Yes, rapture will come. We might not know exactly when, but know that there's something called rapture. Okay, so in that same token, we're going to continue our lesson today about the rapture. We started last week. It was more of an introductory lesson. We told you what the rapture was about and what it will entail and all that. We'll take it a step or a notch deeper today. So um, stay tuned, relax, <laughs> get ready. But before we do, let's say a word of prayer before we go on into the service in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you, we worship you, we bless your name. We thank you for another opportunity to be in your presence today. We ask that your presence abides with us. Come in and open our minds, O Lord, to learn of you, O Lord. Prepare us for your plans and purposes for us in the mighty name of Jesus. And at the end of this class, leave us better than we came into the class in the precious name of Jesus. We give you thanks. We give you glory. We pray with thanksgiving in the precious name of Jesus. Yes, in the precious name of Jesus, we pray. So in our normal manner, we'll go and have our praise worship. We sing, we dance, and we give our best praise to God. Why do we do that? The Bible says, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Are you breathing? <laughs> then you have every right. It, it, the, the onus is on you to give God all the thanks, all the praises from the depths of your being. Because in, the Bible says, in God we live, we move and have our being. Therefore, get ready. Put on your shoes. Get ready. Let's dance vigorously to the God of all creation and give him all the thanks from our hearts. And then we'll be back and we'll get to learn more about our lessons on rapture. See you shortly. Come on, children. We want to praise the Lord this morning. It's a beautiful Sunday. Now we're going to express one of the fruits of the Spirit, and that is joy. So I need you to pick up your dancing shoes, and let's praise the Lord, okay? Come on. Come on. Come on. Are you ready? I've got joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart, down in my heart. I've got joy, 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 joy down in my heart, down in my heart today. Let me hear you sing. I've got the joy. Jesus in my heart. 
Welcome, 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 welcome back. 
I hope you danced to the Lord from the depths of your heart. You gave him praise. You gave him all the glory. You know, it's because God lives that we live. I'm serious. Without him, there is nothing to us. So bear that in mind. And therefore, he deserves all the praise, all the thanks, all the glory, all the worship. Whatsoever thing you can give to glorify God, he's worthy of it and even more. So thank you and welcome back. So today we are going to continue our lesson. Our lesson on who can remember the topic we started out this month, seven days ago. <laughs> who can remember? Yes, I mentioned it during our introduction. That is the topic of rapture. So last week we started with rapture and it was more of an introduction. You know, telling us about a few concepts about rapture. What is rapture all about? about. It might not be a word that is expressly written in the Bible, but it is described. There are so many events that have happened, you know, um, in the Bible that are descriptive of the rapture. So many things Christ said descriptive of rapture as well, and there were events, there were particular people during their lifetime, they were raptured. And if we remember once again, rapture is about being caught up suddenly. The Bible says in the twinkling of an eye, we will be transformed. We'll be caught up, you know, with Christ in the air and we'll be with him forever. So that is the topic we are still on. And today we'll still be talking about rapture. But more importantly, can we prepare our minds? What are the things that would tell us that, oh, rapture is coming, it's on its way. So today we'll focus more on the events before rapture occurs. The events before rapture occurs. So, you know, are there things that can prepare us and tell us, oh, hey, mind the way you're living, be watchful, be careful, you know, are you living as God would want you to live? Are there things, pointers? You know, before new movies come out, there's what they call previews. They give us previews. There are things you're going to see. You understand? I will tell you, ah, hmm, these are things likely to come. There are things likely to come before the rapture comes. So today we are going to pick all those things one after the other. So I'll just run through them. You know, it's, it's, it's more or less a brief summary of virtually everything that has been captured in Matthew 24, verses 1 to 24. So first, Jesus said, you know, false prophets will come. People will come lying in the name of Jesus. Just saying, oh, I am the Christ. Run, come to me, come to me. I will save you. I will save you. I'm the Messiah. I can solve all your problems. He said, no, no, no. Don't follow them. Say so you hear of wars, you hear of wars, wars here, wars in the world. Say nation will rise up against nation, kingdom against kingdom. Aren't we hearing that? So all these things are happening. We may not know exactly the day and the time the rapture will happen, but they are foretellers. They are telling. They are foretelling of things to come. In other words, they are saying you ah, be prepared. Watch these things. These are signs. These are things. You know, you look at the cloud and you see it cloudy and all that. Everything is looking dark and you start running home because you don't have an umbrella. You're not wearing a, ra a raincoat. Something tells you something is imminent. Rain is about to fall. So these are what these signs are telling us, that the end is approaching. They say there, are, there will be earthquakes. You've heard of earthquakes, you know. There will be incurable diseases. There will be famine and pestilence, you know. There will be persecution of Christians. He said, because you follow me, people will hate you. Just because you bear the name of, you say, oh, I am a child of God. Ah, I believe in Jesus Christ. It's just, it's just for that sake. You'll be hated. You will be hated. So it shouldn't surprise you if... Someday, some, some person, ah, say, because you believe it, ah, go away, you're a stupid person, you're, you know, persecution will come just because you're associated or you belong to Christ. So bear that in mind. You see, 
It says offense. There will be generally increase in offense and wickedness. People will become more wicked. You know, they will do more offensive things. Offensive things. You will just sit down. You have not, you know, done any wrong to anybody, but people will wrong you. People will wrong you. People will do dastardly things. You understand? People will do dastardly things. You know, there are places around the world, all these things are already happening. You understand? They will just know, oh, you're, you're Christian. Oh, people are gathered here. They say they are in the name of uh, Jesus Christ. That's why they are gathered. And they, are, they say they are a church and all that. People will throw bombs into that, such a place. Wickedness. Wickedness will grow. These are signs telling you that the sudden, you know, um, twinkling of an eye experience of rapture is around the corner. We don't know exactly what day it is or what time it will be. But they are foretelling signs, foretelling, and telling us, be prepared. Okay? It says also, the love of believers will grow cold. So there are people that have believed in Jesus for a long time, and they have been hearing, oh, he said he will come, he will come, he will come. He hasn't come till today. To hell with all these things. Go and tell us, these are fables, they are stories. Please, let's go ahead and enjoy our lives and live however we need to live or however we want to live, our lives belong to us. Don't belong to anybody. I can choose to do whatever I want <laughs> with my life. But that is not true. Your life is not yours. My life is not mine. If it were, we would have determined the initiation and the termination of our lives. But we can't. The initiation, where your life began, you had no input to it. If you had little or no input. You could not decide where you would be born who you'll be born to, and what time you'll be born. Similarly, the termination, the last day of your life, you can hardly tell. You can hardly tell, except grace is given you. You understand? So your life does not belong to My life does not belong to me. So let's bear that in mind. Also, Jesus spoke about the preaching of the gospel to the ends of the earth. This is a sign too. Even in the midst of all this wickedness, that's when God's word will grow. It will grow to reach out. Because when people start experiencing evil, uh, that is when their hunger for God will arise. Their appetite for God will arise. So the preaching of the gospel will be needed all over the world. And it, this persecution and all will help expand the gospel of Jesus Christ to cover the whole world, to cover the whole earth. So, you know, for us in all this, what can be expected? You know, um, what can we be doing to ensure that we are raptured when the rapture comes? So first, it's very important. Be born again. Be born again. Yield your life to God. Become a tool in God's hands to be used. And then live ready. Live ready. Live in accordance to God's plans, God's dictates for you. Live in accordance to what he says. If God says, don't do this, don't do that. If God says, do this, go ahead and do it. So know, know for sure that Jesus is coming back, even though we may not know the exact day and time. For some of us, it might be in our lifetime. So for some of us, it might not be in our lifetime. But please, <laughs> live ready, live prepared. Know that that day is coming and it is closing in. Close, it's getting closer and closer and closer with every passing day. So I said, for us, one thing is needful to start with. If we'll ever be raptured, you know, and if it happens in our lifetime and that we must be born again. So I'm going to give you the opportunity. If you want to give your life to Christ, please say this prayer after me. In Jesus' name. Father, we ask that, you know, you come into our lives and take full preeminence, full control. We yield our lives to you today. We ask that whoever we were before, we have dropped them and we have decided to pick on the new people, the new person you have made us, the new person you had designed for us to be from the word go, from the foundations of the world. 
in the precious name of Jesus. We ask for the forgiveness and the cleansing of our sins. Whatsoever separated us from you, O oh Lord, we ask that you take it out, O oh Lord, and reestablish our union with you because we believe in the price your son, Jesus Christ, came to pay for us in the precious name of Jesus. Therefore, we stand under the authority of the name and the blood of Jesus and we declare that we are yours in the precious name of Jesus. Have your way in our lives. Come and be the Lord and Savior of our lives from here on in Jesus' mighty name, in the precious name of Jesus. If you said that prayer, I would tell you welcome to the family of God. It's a brand new experience for you and it's a decision that it is unregrettable. Nobody ever regrets that decision because I can promise you it's going to take you farther than you ever thought in the precious name of Jesus. So before we go, let's go through our memory verse. Our memory verse is the same as we did last week. And it's taken from 1 Corinthians 15, verses 51 and 52. It's taken from the New Living Translation. And I'll read. It says, but let me reveal to you a wonderful secret. We will not all die, but we will all be transformed. It will happen in a moment, in the blink of an eye, when the last trumpet is blown. For when the trumpet sounds, those who have died will be raised to live forever, and we who are living will also be transformed. Praise God. Hallelujah. So let's live ready, and God bless you as you do so. Live forever prepared all your life. And God will help us live that life according to his plans and purposes for us. Thanks for being with us once again today. And God bless you. See you next week. And remember, live ready, live prepared. Bye. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming soon for us. We're gonna see him. We're gonna meet him. We're gonna see him face to face. In the blink of an eye, we will all be changed to new bodies. At the trumpet. Sound, we will all be away at heaven's gate In the blink of an eye we will all be changed to new bodies At the trumpet sound we will all be away at heaven's gate Jesus is coming Jesus is coming, Jesus is coming soon for us. We're gonna see Him, we're gonna meet Him, we're gonna see Him face to face. In the blink of an eye, we will all be changed to new bodies. At the trumpet sound, we will all be away at heaven's gate. In the blink of an eye, we will all be changed to new bodies. At the trumpet sound, we will all be away at heaven's In the blink of an eye, we will all be changed to new bodies. At the trumpet sound, we will all be away at heaven's gate. In the blink of an eye, we will all be changed to new bodies. At the trumpet sound, we will all be away at heaven's gate. In the blink of an eye, we will all be changed to new bodies. At the 
trumpets sound, we will all be away at heaven.